Welcome to the Biotech Whisperer channel. Our topic today is on an overview of biotechnology applications. If you are new here, we are a group of retired professors sharing bite-sized videos. Let's continue with our topic. Biotechnological innovations have been infused into our daily lives, and we find them in pharmacies and supermarkets, among many other places. From yogurts to cheese products, which is part of food biotechnology. In pharmacies, we see medical innovation helping to provide therapies to counter diseases. More recently, biotechnology has become one of the spearheads in the fight against the COVID, SUPGAO global pandemic, since it helps to decipher the virus, genome, and understand how our body's defense mechanism works against infectious agents. This benefits the global health epidemiological control efforts. Medical innovations bring revolutionary treatment approaches, such as in the form of messenger RNA vaccines. Within the many expected applications, we believe that biotechnology will play a crucial role in the society of the future in preventing and containing potential pathogens, and more innovations in this space is expected in the coming years. In this video we will touch on the three areas where biotechnology has been impactful to humans. The three areas are environmental uses, medical uses and industry applications. Environmental protection is an integral component of sustainable development, in particular due to the fact that our living environment is threatened and challenged daily through the activities of man. With the continued increase in the use of chemicals, energy, and non-renewable resources by an expanding global population, associated environmental problems are also increasing. Despite escalating efforts to prevent waste accumulation and to promote recycling, the amount of environmental damage caused by overconsumption, the quantities of waste generated, and the degree of unsustainable land use appear likely to continue growing. Through bioremediation processes, which is important and useful for ecological recovery, biotechnology can harness the innate catabolic properties of microorganisms, fungi, plants and enzymes are used to restore contaminated ecosystems. Next, let us look at bioremediation. What is bioremediation? Bioremediation refers to the productive use of microorganisms to remove or detoxify pollutants, usually as contaminants of soils, water, or sediments that otherwise intimidate human health. Biotreatment, bioreclamation, and biorestoration are the other terminologies for bioremediation. Bioremediation is not a new practice. Microorganisms have been used for many years to remove organic matter and toxic chemicals from domestic and manufacturing waste discharge. Biological cleaning procedures make use of the fact that most organic chemicals are subjected to enzymatic attack of living organisms. The most common approach is the use of enzymes as substitute chemical catalysts. Significant reduction or complete elimination of harsh chemicals may be achieved as is observed in leather, textile processing, and pulp and paper industry. Biotechnology and DNA technology could be considered synonymous in the early discovery period. Back then much of biotechnology is DNA-based including manipulation at molecular levels. Given that the term biotechnology is technology based on biological applications, it has driven molecular biology with discovery of recombinant enzymes, ribosomes, and led to platform technologies such as sequencing array applications and genome characterization. Since the completion of the Human Genome Project, the data produced from the project, and the tools and technologies associated with the project have led to numerous biotechnology applications. The development of insulin, the growth hormone, molecular identity, and diagnostics, Gene therapies and vaccines such as hepatitis B are some of the milestones of biotechnology and its alliance with genetic engineering. In fact the molecular characterization and diagnostic capabilities advances marks the cornerstone of medical biotechnology. Pharmacogenomics, sometimes called pharmacogenetics, is a field of research that studies of how the genetic inheritance of an individual affects his or her body's response to medications. In other words, pharmacogenomics will lead to the design 
and production of drugs that are adapted to each person's genetic makeup, where the long-term goal is to help doctors select the drugs and doses best suited for each person. Pharmacogenomics has applications in illnesses such as cancer, cardiovascular disorders, depression, tension deficit disorders, HIV, asthma, and diabetes, among others. While pharmacogenomic testing is currently used for only a few drugs, the field is growing very quickly. Improved understanding of how pharmacogenomics can protect your health and improve your treatment will be increasingly important. Pharmacogenomic approaches to drug development tend to target the underlying problem rather than just treating symptoms. Some diseases are caused by specific changes, mutations, in a gene such as cystic fibrosis. The same gene can have different types of mutations, which have different effects. Some mutations may result in a protein that does not work correctly, while others may mean that the protein is not made at all. Drugs can be created based on how the mutation affects the protein, and these drugs will only work for a specific type of mutation. Imagine for instance drugs that are released into the bloodstream at the first sign of infection, or the synthetic spider web which is not only five times stronger than steel, but also has great elasticity. Its potential uses include bulletproof clothing, artificial skin for burns, or waterproof adhesives. Now, these so-called smart materials, which taps on the latest revolution, in the field of materials science has unlimited potential. Smart materials are materials that are manipulated to respond in a controllable and reversible way, modifying some of their properties as a result of external stimuli such as certain mechanical stress or a certain temperature, among others. Because of their responsiveness, Smart materials are also known as responsive materials also termed as active materials although it would be more accurate to say that they are categorized as reactive materials. There are five major categories where these smart materials are grouped into. They are isoelectric materials, shape memory materials, chromoactive materials, magnetoheological materials and photoactive materials. Environmentally friendly plastics that biodegrade and require less energy to make will improve our sustainability initiatives. Take for instance, shrimp which is a degradable bioplastic derived from shrimp shells and silk protein. Shrimp is derived from chitosan, found in shrimp shells, and a silk protein called fibroin that mimics the microarchitecture of insects, exoskeletons, and it rapidly biodegrades into nitrogen-rich fertilizer. Now that's innovation with biotechnology. Moreover, since chitosan and fibroin are both used in FDA-approved devices, shrilk also may be useful for creating implantable foams, films, and scaffolds for surgical closures, wound healing, tissue engineering, and regenerative medicine applications. As for the closing perspectives, looking what is happening around us. We see the growth of industries based on biotechnology, such as those concerned with food, pharmaceuticals, and waste treatment, are closely linked with the world's major problems of malnutrition, disease, and environmental pollution. Biotechnology is fundamental to the future optimal use of the world's renewable resources. It also will make an increasing contribution to meeting energy requirements, both indirectly through the use of improved processes and directly by providing substitutes for existing fuels, but this contribution, although valuable, should not be overestimated. He written, we summarize three key aspects of how biotechnological innovations have made improved our lives, from the therapeutic and sustainability angle.